welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at some uh, different paint strokes and how to achieve them and what you might use them for. We're also going to be uh, trying out a couple new tools you may not have tried before like the pipette and the mouth atomizer which you probably have heard about but maybe haven't tried. So we'll do a short thing on each of these and see if it's something you can bring into your own artwork for the coming year. So let me go down to my tabletop. Here we go. Okay, here's my paper. I use a 140 pound Fabriano uh, uh, paper, 140 pound bright white and cold press. That's the other word I was thinking of. So this is just a piece of scrap paper, which we're gonna play with here for a little bit today. So let's start out with um, painting wet on wet. Okay, so we're just gonna get a corner of our paper wet here. It's just a brush to get some of that water off. There we go. And okay. So see now it's just got like a little bit of shine on it. If you can see in the light here, just a tiny bit, not super, super wet. And now we'll go into some rows. And we'll just let it run along that wet area of the paper. And you can see. Now it just kind of keeps moving, keeps moving. And if you wanted to have some colors mix on the paper, you go into your Cornacridone Gold. And while this is still damp, just run it right alongside the rose. Okay, like so. And they'll mingle in here together and then of course move outward away from each other also. But you can get some pretty color combinations by working wet into wet. Okay, and then of course the other would be wet on to dry paper, which is just just like it sounds. Wet paint on dry paper. This is pretty much, it goes there, it stays there. It's not going to move, it's not going to blossom, it's not going to do much of anything. But now if we go back into an idea of wet into wet by putting in our gold next to that rose, it will travel into the rose, but it won't travel out onto the paper, okay? So that way it'll just mix the two colors together in a more unified way because it's not moving away from each other. They're only moving towards each other. And let's just see, we can also, okay, I'll show you a little bit of gradation, which is when you take a color, you just lay it down so okay for this it's best to tilt your paper a little bit to get the to get the um, pigment moving in the right direction so I'm just adding now water go down go down and I'm cleaning off any paint in between so I'm going to keep bringing in clear water Now I want to stop this, so I would just take my brush, use my fingers to pull off excess water, and just run it along the bottom, let it pick up that water. Okay, do it again. And that gives you a gradation where it goes from dark to lighter to lighter to lighter to lighter, all the way down to a light pink. All right, let me see. Um, Sure, what's on the other side here? Okay, and um, again, we could even color mix together. An example of this would be, you know, if you were to paint a little flower or something such. Okay, a little cup. Okay. There we go. All right. This is an example of where this would come in handy. So you can go into your gold. I'm gonna paint it inside, but I'm just touching the white paper. I'm not letting it touch the pink yet. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see this. There we go. Okay, so see, I'm just painting inside. Then I'm gonna clean my brush off. Again, take off all the excess water. Now I'm gonna let them join up, okay, so. Just touching the edges together. All right, 
So you get this nice, I'm gonna zoom in a little closer. You get this nice soft edge where it's not like a circle, like when we did, you know, flowers when we were kids and there's that tight circle in the middle. This is a nice organic shape and they're, they're melding in and out together. So it makes it look more natural. <clears throat> and um, as I promised you, here's some ideas for these tools now. This is a pipette, which you can use with your watercolor paints. Uh, open up a different color here. Yeah, that one's not cooperating. Here we go. Shake it up a little bit. Okay, so here's, um, this is still damp up here where I did the gradation, or gradation. I was probably say that wrong. But now pipette, it's just like a children's um, eyedropper type thing that you squeeze, put it down in the paint, and it brings the paint up into the pipette. So you can just like drop it, wet into wet, or even down to dry paper if you want, or you can do a line. It's just another way to play with your watercolor paints, you know, and, and when you push them around like this, it's a different look than the brush gives you. So it's just a different way of doing, of putting paint on your paper. Okay, so that's a fun thing to play with, and it's a, it's you know just a hard edged little um, plastic piece, so you can really kind of do some fine, like if you wanted to do lines coming across, like you know into a transformer or something, those sweeping lines, you can use a pipette for that. So and you always got to rinse them out, so you just again put them into your clean water a couple times, and then it's clean and ready to use next time. Okay, so clean up my little mess here. That was a lot of paint coming out of that little pipe bat. There we go. Okay, so, and here's something else while we're doing it actually is, don't be afraid too to let your paint run around your paper, okay, and, and do some things. And if it's too hard edge or too, the lines are too heavy and you don't like them, you always have your, your atomizing bottle handy. You can just soften, soften the edge of them like so, and then let the paint run around. So. There's, what I'm basically showing you is there's no rules uh, to watercolor. I don't believe in always or nevers. Um, the only thing I would say is when it comes to masking fluid, there's a couple rules. So if you ever decide to start using masking fluid, you can always ask me then. And I think I've done a video or two on masking fluid, so you might see it here. Okay, now the last thing is the mouth atomizer. This is mine, which I've had for a very long time. It's Holbein. It's the all silver. No, there's no mouthpiece. There's no wood mouthpiece. There's no, they, they make different ones. I just like the plain metal to, all the way, top to bottom. And you open it up to 90 degrees. You make sure the little tube, the top of the little tube, I'm gonna zoom in really close because this is hard to see. Okay, here we go. So the middle tube comes up here, okay? Here's the big tube. Make sure the top of that little tube is dissecting the middle of the big tube. Does that make sense? So if the, there's a straight line going across the top of this little tube, it would cut the circle in half of the big tube. Okay, so that's that's what you want it to look like because otherwise it's gonna be really hard to blow paint. You might pass out or something. So let's go back down here. So anyway, once you've done that, you take your, um, your paint, hold it towards you because this two, little tube goes into the paint. And if you're holding it away from you, you'll be on dry land, so you won't be picking up paint with the small end. So anyway, tilt it towards you, take a deep breath. Okay, and I'll show you what that looks like up close. But it just gives you a little texture. Um, there we go. See all these little dots? And um, just tiny, tiny little dots. But it, but you can keep layering these too. Like when this is dry, I could blow rose over that and get a and get a violet. Or I can blow um, my quinacridone gold over that and get a green. So it's, it's a neat way to kind of push and pull objects in your paintings. Like let's say you finish a, a still life and you got something over here in the corner that's kind of just jumping out at the viewer. And you realize that it's in a corner and that was a mistake and you're not happy with it, you can use your mouth atomizer. I always keep one jar that's labeled mud and it's basically all three colors mixed together with a touch of lamp black. And that is a perfect thing to shove something back into a corner where I want, I want it to be less noticeable without disturbing 
the paint underneath without disturbing the actual painting. It'll just push it back a little bit. So anyway, there's some tips and tricks for you for the upcoming holiday season. And I hope you will give them a try and uh, put them into your work this year and see what happens. And I would greatly appreciate it for the new year if you would subscribe and hit like below. And I will be uh, happy to give you content for the rest of the year, some new things to work on. So have a safe and happy holiday. Take care and get out there and paint. See you soon.